morning. Good morning. We are here below the pyramid, uh, which, you know, as far as I can tell, no razors are getting sharp up there. Anyway, um, what? Uh, it's, a, it's a, I don't know, it's a thing Terry Pratchett talks about. Uh, never mind. Yeah, it, yeah, anyway. Um, the great dung beetle in the sky, etc. Um, yeah, so we're here at uh, the edge of Bedford, uh, just below Priory Marina. We were planning to go to Priory Marina to get some diesel and then found out that Priory Marina is closed Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's Wednesday It's today. Wednesday, yeah. So hopefully we've got enough diesel to get us back to the next marina. We do. We've got plenty of diesel. Uh, Kelpie Marina is a ways ahead and then there's... Well, we've got enough to get back to Earth, so we, we've got diesel. We just need to find it and source it at some point and fill up before we try and do the New Bedford. Uh, so we will we shall do that, but just not this morning. So we've kind of reached the end of the navigation, so we've got to retrace our steps all the way to Earth, like Michael said, and then we can do a shortcut from there to Denver. If we can get on the right tidal setup and river depth and everything. And then once we get to Denver, we've just got the middle level navigations to do and the Neen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... So, we basically have to potter our way back up towards Erith. We've got some logistical issues that involve having to make some trips off of the boat, both together and me individually, and for reasons of the way that trains are sort of run and discounts using these things called rail cards, we need to stay at or below Huntingdon or in order to use one of those discounts. And so for the next little while, uh, week or two, I think. Yeah, we need to stay kind of between St. Neots and Huntingdon slash God Manchester. Yeah, and there's not many re moorings between the two. So no. I don't know. We'll work it out. Yeah. But yeah, and then after that, we can carry on. Yeah. But for today, it's, it's, today it's to Great Barford. Mainly because at Great Barford, there is Momo. Uh, Momo. So we were going to stay here for today and then do one like big push. But yesterday, Michael was like, I think we should go and stop at that nice mooring in Great Barford. And I said, you mean the one near the Momo? And he's like, oh. Yeah. For oh, those yes. who don't know what Momo are, they are... We should video them. We should videotape them. We'll we video should, our we, trip to we'll, go to. We'll do. videotape the, the, the uh, picking up of the Momo. But Momos are dumplings, basically. They're just um, either steamed or fried dumplings. They're a Nepalese um, dish that is quite popular. And we both got introduced to them in India. And uh, yeah, they're just really nice. And, and these not something you find things. like in a very authentic form very often here. And so it was nice to find a place that actually did authentic Momo. So uh, we will be going to get more authentic Momo tonight. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So in order to do that, we need to get to Great Barford. There are three locks between here and Great Barford. Uh, one of which is not very far, actually. Um, and then, uh, yeah. This, I believe it's one guillotine lock and two, no, I think it's three locks that all have double-ended. Um, oh yeah, they were manual, weren't they? Yeah, they're the manual ones with double-ended uh, uh, V-gates, so a little bit more work. Okay. But once we're through those three, I this think from that point been, onwards it gets nitrogen for us. I just realized this lighting's been terrible, so it's really annoying. There's a terrible lighting. Well, like I'm in your shadow. Oh. Do you want to redo it? No, I want to go. Okay. Oh my god, look, look quick. Yes, I know, I see. Oh. Why have you got one foot in the air, George? <laughs> What's that all about? Him look like... <laughs> George is just splayed out on his side. You got your camera? <laughs> Put the camera at it. Yeah. It's gonna be. There's George. Just yeah, get that one one foot back in the air, George. You know you're on camera now. Yes. Such a good So there it goes again. Yep. Uh, see, the thing is, you turn your back on George, and he's going to do something goofy. It's just the way that it is. Anyway, let's stop talking and go to Great Barford and get Momo and enjoy the sunshine and live the boat life. Yes, the boat life. Good fun. Come on, George. There's the Priory Marina, a useful diesel stop for anyone visiting when it's open.
George, what's this? What is it? Oh, yeah. <gasps> Don't you've got your head through it. I wish it's for it. I know it. I don't understand. Daddy reaches for it. Daddy's good. Daddy's good. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? No, we don't eat it. It's not an easy thing. It's a put into your hair pretty thing. Yeah. You're teasing him. <laughs> What do you want? What do you want? What? No! No, 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 no. Okay. Now you're destroyed. Kill the feather. Kill don't the let feather. Me, don't let me eat that. Kill the feather. Okay. No. That's, 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 that's no. It's not, it's <laughs> not a chew toy. Bird. It's not a chew toy. George and his feather keep us entertained while the lock fills. And when the counter is finished, we can raise the gate for the boat to come in. These bricks on the floor are so helpful and give your feet something to grip when you're pushing or pulling the heavy gate. What is Michael up to now? These gates have brackets on them so they can be padlocked open in times of flooding. There's the welcoming blue sign that marks a gober mooring. We've mentioned gober moorings a few times, but I'm not sure if we've said what they are. Basically, they're mooring spots provided and managed by the Great Ouse Boating Association, and you can pay an annual membership fee to use them, and we definitely say it's worthwhile to do so. We spot Weir Boys ahead, which more often than not is a sign that there's a lot coming up. This is the huge castle mill lock and it's set against us, so we all get off the boat to get it ready. This is the weir that sits alongside the lock. This is the lock that has the paddles positioned halfway along the chamber. When you look down between the holes in the boards, you can see the water rushing in. Oh, 
was just thinking about what it would be like to be like a fish that's down there in front of the sluice. You know, it's just kind of like, hey, it's a good day. Found some vegetables. Ate a mosquito. That's a bit, what, what's that rhythmic clunking noise? Something sounds like it's sliding. <laughs> <laughs> An unexpected water slide. <laughs> like having a fish go. <laughs> so, is it Castle Mills Lock or Castle Mill Lock? Because these two environment agency signs don't agree. I'm not sure if it's volunteers that plant these wild flower meadows at the locks, but they're beautiful, so thank you to whoever's responsible. As you can see, it's a fairly deep lock, made deeper by the fact that you're already a good eight feet down when you enter. I'm glad that lock's done. It was safe and it felt safe and it's well maintained and the uh, balance beams, sorry, the gates are all balanced. But because the mechanism is slightly different and because it's so much deeper than the other locks, it just kind of feels less safe even though it isn't. And it just makes you kind of a little more apprehensive when you're doing it. But it's done now and uh, back to the boat. accidentally get a little too close to this tree and poor George emerges on the other side with a branch attached. If you saw our vlog while we were heading upstream you'll know that this is the Danish camp and it's really nice to see the restaurant so busy today. At this lock we can cruise straight in, which is lucky as the lock landing is rather busy with paddle boarders. The 
a slightly different rear design at this lock. Last lock of the day, pretty straightforward. And uh, just wanted to take a second to appreciate how blooming gorgeous it is around here. Michael doesn't get to see this from the boat, but it is just lovely. There's a helpful no entry sign outside the old disused lock just in case anyone thinks that it's still the navigation. There's the striking red brick Great Barford Bridge in the distance and we're planning to moor just after that. Back on the Momo mooring. Indeed. <laughs> Coming through the bridge was fun. Because um, there's a one-way system, there's two arches that you navigate through, one in each direction. And on this side, there's nice arrows above the arches, but yeah, coming the other like way. There's like a big metal sign with a blue arrow pointing at exactly which arch you're supposed to go through. And then coming the other way, there's nothing. So. <laughs> and, well, there is, it's, but it's you can't see it as you approach. And so. it turns out it is actually the same arch. Or is it not? No, you came through that one. Did I come through the? Yeah. Did I didn't come through the taller one. No. It seems strange. No, anyway. because there was the there was the two with the wooden on it. Remember? Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. <sighs> yeah. Well, that was just such a lovely cruise in the August sun on a beautiful yeah. river. Yeah. Beautiful weather. Three easy locks. Gorgeous scenery. Lots of just you know, lots of trees, lots of birds, just. Just two boats. Who I keep saying lots of trees, lots of birds, lots of wildlife. There's lots, lots of trees, there's lots of birds, there's lots of wildlife. What there isn't is Birmingham and this sort of big city type no. thing. That's what I'm talking about. It's, it's just like, it's so pretty. So many dragonflies today. Lots of herons. Yeah. Dragonflies, damselflies, herons, fish. It's just, I don't know. The ooze system is just gorgeous. From Bedford all the way to Great Barford was uh, really lovely. And... Uh, only two boats passed us. Yeah, the I think they might have the been. Way. They were viewers. Both of them, yeah. Yeah, they, they both came around the corner, saw us, and immediately went, ah! And, and of course, and we waving. saw them in um, a really shallow area, so the second one had to very kindly stop and let us pass. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was fun. It was like just the last second, like, oh, everybody scram! And then everybody's like, we like your videos! And it's like, okay, great, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and a lot of swimmers in the water, a lot of people, um, a lot of canoes, canoes and, and, uh, and just enjoying the nice weather and the beautiful sunshine. So, you know, more power to everybody for that. And we arrived here, came in, pulled up immediately, had to pull forward because we were on the point that people are using to get in and out of the water. So that's made it a little bit easier for them. Yeah, they're very nice. Yeah. Uh, asked us to move on a bit and then there were some people sat here and they they offered to move so so that we could put the wood oh, the, the rope around the uh bollard. well bollard on on these particular moorings they're really just big pieces of wood that have been driven into the ground but uh sort of bollards yeah yeah it's so just good. lovely all good very happy kind of tempted to go and sit outside the pub with a long cold drink yeah yeah it is uh 
The pub's looking nice. They've got some umbrellas up. All of the table's currently full. But oh, are they? Maybe if we see one later, that would be nice. And definitely Momo later. Definitely Momo, for sure. Well, me, Jenny. If you're going to come to Crate Barford, go to the um, Kathmandu kitchen and have some Momo, for sure. Try them out. You never had them before? It's worth it. Don't necessarily dunk them into the chili sauce before trying the chili sauce, though, because <laughs> that is some spicy chili. So yeah, one night here, Momo's, and then on towards St. Neots tomorrow. Yeah. Okay, so, so, thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Oops. So, thank you for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Subscribe to Minimalist Maximal Velocity for our time lapse videos. And click that bell if you want to get notifications. It means bell. Oh yeah, the bell. So, Michael has conned me and George. He suddenly, well not suddenly, he had um, quite a big email to respond to. So he couldn't go and get the Momo. So George and I are walking. It's about a 20 minute walk, but that's okay. It's a really lovely evening. That is a nice walk. So George and I are off to the Kathmandu kitchen to pick up the Momo for dinner. Mission successful, now back to the boat with the food. from a sunny Bedford on the Great River Ooze, on the River Great Ooze. Jesus loud. <laughs> I don't know why I'm in a good mood. I'm fine with you being in a good mood. I just wish you hadn't surprised me by yelling at my ear. Sorry. See, this is what it's like for me. Usually, your, your mouth is at my ear level. You're not used to my mouth being at your ear level. This oh, is that's what, true. That's this is, true. Welcome to my world. Welcome to your world. Oh my God, it's such an interesting way of seeing the planet. <laughs> So this is what it's like to be short. <sighs> I'm not even short. That's my fact. Well, you're short compared to me. But then so is the whole world. Have you seen what your dog's doing? Yeah, he's so cute. Are you sure, cute? Okay. <laughs> Are we really going to start the video like that? No, that's a whole bunch of nonsense. You're going to have to put that in the bloopers section. We don't really do bloopers anymore because we've got so professional that we don't have that many. Oh, you got to be kidding me. That means our entire video is a blooper. All right. Good morning. Ah! <laughs> well, this is why we need to get you a step ladder sort of thing. Is that better? No. Is that not better? Is that better? Mm. Okay.